realize I'm gonna have to do a little warning. We are all going to die. And there's no way of getting out of it. But take a step back, as they say, use your time wisely. Now, I'm not gonna divulge too much into this. When it comes down to it, the key is living in the moment. Next year, Eddie's gonna work on his t-shirt business, business, Wisdom Tees, here on Bali, and help me a lot, right? He'll be back, I hope. Today, he's going to talk about ethereal gratitude, appreciating the small things. Welcome, Eddie. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Eddie Rashid, and my presentation is on ethereal gratitude, appreciating the small things. Let's first take the time to inhale slowly and deeply. Hold it in. Focus on the inner walls of your lungs stretching and the small airbags filled with oxygen. You might not be able to feel that, but just feel your lungs stretching. Now exhale. You feel that? You're now experiencing living in the moment. Living, this is a way, or perhaps the only way, to start to feel grateful. Gratitude is matterless, scentless, and intangible. It's a mysterious awe feeling of just feeling thankful. Since you are here, here now, feel with your hands, go ahead, the strong clothes on your body. Everyone, look at it closely. Look at the tiny little strands holding everything together, protecting you from the exterior world. So really look at it. You could start by thanking the tree or the plant that made your clothes, or even the sun for its energy to grow the plant, or everything before that, like the big bang that made suns. You can literally spend your whole life chasing the cause of things that made you grateful. But let's start here. You could probably guess what we humans truly desire. We desire happiness. Happiness is not something you can find. Oh, I found happiness. It's not something you can buy nor sell, but thresholds that can be entered at will, a controlled state of mind at any time. Honestly, that sounds too good to be true. Well, it's not that easy. Why it's hard is very simple. It's because we don't take the genuine time to sit down and recognize the things that make us happy. So what's the first step? The first step is the key. It's centering ourselves with just our attention to breath, like what we did in the beginning. I challenge everyone here to consciously breathe throughout this whole presentation. It's quite a challenge. It's in and out. Think about that. You notice when I told you to, deep, to take deep breaths, you started naturally to breathe deeper so your mind is focused on it. Deep breaths keep our brains healthy and active. We all forget to breathe though. Don't blame yourself, because that's the beauty of it. No matter how far we are in our heads, in the past, in the, pre in the future, we can bring it all back to here like a switch. There are other ways to kickstart us back to here, back to the moment, other than breathing. For instance, doing, doing something ran randomly and unexpected throughout your day, like touching your nose or randomly dancing or doing dinosaur sounds. <laughs> Basically anything to stop the normal path of things. It's kind of like looking at your feet while you're dreaming and suddenly you're lucid dreaming. Asleep but awake. Looking at the world around you is another way to be in the moment. Observe an ant walking around. Oh. Observe an ant walking around. Look at its, look at its path and, and notice its small, intelligent choices. Or look at your hand closely. I want everyone to just look at their hand closely and look at the fingerprints that they've been given. If you go close enough, they actually look like the Grand Canyon. We are brought to this moment when we are mesmerized. I was mesmerized when I was observing the incredible speed of a hummingbird's wings as it carelessly floated above flowers. I want to show you this video. Their movements are so robotic.
things like that capture us. Even as simple as just walking down the park at the right time where everything is lit by the sunset sky. All of, all of the, those things are ways to help us. That's the key, being in the moment. Here's a shot of awe, a video called Awe, done by my favorite performance philosopher, Jason Silva. I don't think there's sound. It's positive. But the contrast between banality and wonder, between disengagement and radiant ecstasy, between being unaffected by the here and now, being absolutely ravished emotionally by it. And I think one of the problems for human beings is the mental habits. Once we create a comfort zone, we rarely step outside of that comfort zone. And the consequence of that is a phenomenon known as hedonic adaptation. Overstimulation to the same kind of thing, same stimuli again and again and again, renders said stimuli invisible. Your brain has already mapped it in its own head, and you no longer literally have to be engaged by it. You have eyes yet see not, ears that hear not, and hearts that neither feel nor understand. There's a great book called The Wondering Brain that says that one of the ways that we elicit wonder is by scrambling the self temporarily so that the world can seep in. And the human says even the blade of grass, when given proper attention, becomes an infinitely magnificent world in itself. You know, Darwin said attention, if sudden and close, graduates into surprise, and this into astonishment, and this into stupefied amazement. That's what rapture is. That's what illumination is. That's what that sort of infinite, comprehending awe that human beings love so much. And so how do we do that? How do we mess with our perceptual apparatus in order to have the kind of emotional and aesthetic experience from life that we render most meaningful? Because we all know those moments are there. Those are the moments that we make final cut. Only in these moments we experience a fresh, hardly bearable ecstasy of direct energy exploding on our nerve endings. This is the rhapsodic, ecstatic, bursting forth of off that expands our perceptual parameter beyond all previous limits. And we literally have to reconfigure our mental models of the world in order to assimilate the beauty of that down there. That is what it means to be inspired. The Greek root of the term means to breathe in. We take it in. We fit the universe through our brain and it comes out in the form of nothing less than poetry. We have a responsibility to all. Last colorful concoction of thought, Jason mentioned our unescapable comfort zones, which makes us blinded from the new things in life that makes us feel awesome. Living in the moment is a birthplace of gratitude. It's when we can consciously appreciate things, which is why gratitude's the door. So why is gratitude important to us? Most of the time it's just a cliche word that we glide over. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not just a positive word, but an actual feeling. Like centering ourselves, it's a state of mind that you enter. Why is it good for us? Why do our parents want us to feel grateful? There's a very simple answer that follows. Being grateful makes us happy. In your existence, you'll experience wanting something and not wanting it the second you have it. It's how we run, literally. We run on a treadmill where we have to constantly supplement ourselves with things that makes us feel good. And when that runs out, we slip back to the cruising speed we run on what is called the hedonic treadmill. We get something, we feel a little up from it, and we float back to the stable plateau of our own happiness and pleasure. pleasure. Basically an endless cycle of purchasing and consuming something to supplement our comfort zones. It's suggested among psychologists that being thankful for what we already have is the true cause of what makes us feel happy. Here's an interesting quote by a 2,000-year-old philosopher, Epicurus, once said, Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. Well, he had it, he had it dialed, and he's as old as dust. 
That was supposed to be in joke sounding form, but just like, <laughs> Other than living to keep our species moving through evolution, we live to feel good, right? You could say that my presentation is actually about happiness, but I believe gratitude is the vehicle of happiness. Sometimes we think completing a goal or possessing, possessing, possessing something achieves this long-term happiness. Happiness is in constant flux, so think again. It's always changing, like the ocean. It's something that is absolutely everywhere. It's never been lost and it's never been found. We just close ourselves to it with negative emotions, regret, and stress. Here's a quote by an American stage and screen actor, John Barrymore. Happiness often sneaks in through a little door you didn't know you left open. I love that quote. So back to the treadmill. How do we get off of this treadmill, this blistering uphill treadmill that's sweaty? How do we start to see the world with our hearts? First step is to choose experiences over things. Experiences shape who we are and fill our lives. Forget the shopping sprees. Invest your time in doing activities like making a campfire and singing with friends. If you do want to spend money, that's fine, but at least spend it on two tickets to like a comedy show or play with someone you love or anyone traveling. You get to see the world and become educated. That sticks for you for life to the very moment you pass. A study by Thomas Deleary and Ariel Khalil found such activities are associated with higher levels of happiness, primarily a result of social connections involved. People make us happy. Another thing that really gets us, gets us off the treadmill is doing what really matters. 40% of your happiness comes from intentional activities. That means every choice you make every day actually matters. And when those, those actions are doing small deeds for other people than yourself, like washing somebody else's dish that they left or offering a glass of water to someone who looks thirsty and not being affected when they say no, that leaves you genuinely happy. My favorite, my personal favorite thing is taking time for people. Look at someone you know and just take a few seconds to really see the great spirits they have. Start a little list in your head on why that person is great. Next time you see or have a conversation with someone, forget about anything they've said in the past, positive or negative. Just look at them as if they're painting that scene for the very first time. And for the first time, you're actually paying attention to them with no bias or preconceived notions. You see the entity in its true form. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I want everyone to look, I want everyone to look at the person next to them. I know it gets a little awkward, but uh, give them eye contact and see them as how they are at this moment with no words, just a perfect design, a perfect being. And when you're ready, go ahead, get that awkward happening. All right. <laughs> when you're fully ready, just say, Wow. All right, so let's, let's go back in time a little bit. The key is living in the moment. The door is gratitude, and the light is happiness. So go out and fill those cups or never be fulfilled. Thank you. in the moment.